Change in concavity. That's what section 1.3 is about. Well, not all of 1.3, but maybe most of 1.3. Uh, so this video is going to be about two out of the three topics from section 1.3 and as you see the topics we're going to be covering right now are change and concavity. Now that might make you think of when Obama goes to the dentist but in fact we're going to be doing something a little more mathematical than that. And so of course the topic of today's mathematical excursion is going to be turtle racing. Now, this is yet another real-world scenario because if you want to race turtles, you want to know how to make bets on which is going to be the best turtle. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And here's the situation we want to examine. Let's say we've got um, Pat and Sue. And Pat and Sue are both turtles. And they're not just any turtles, but they're speed turtles. They're going to be entering some sort of turtle racing contest. And we want to look at, uh, let's pick Pat randomly. We want to look at Pat because it turns out that Pat's owner is a little concerned with Pat's performance and wants to examine Pat's uh, recent races to see where he was deficient and if he could do any better. And so here's what Pat's owner is looking at. Oh, that one looks terrible. Let's redraw that. All right, that looks good. So Pat's owner is looking at Pat's position versus time. So we're looking at a graph that looks like this. The x-axis is time, the y-axis is position. And here's the point. Uh, every race starts at the position y equals 0. Notice that since the position is the y-axis, then the starting position is going to be a y-value. And the races all end when the turtle, the first turtle, reaches the position y equals 10. Now, Pat starts off at 0, and he kind of meanders towards the finish line. But, oh no, what are, what are you doing, Pat? Oh, Pat, come on, come on, come on. See, Pat is now going in the wrong direction. He was going towards y equals 10, which is the finish line, but at some point he stopped and he turned around and is going the other way. And so at this point, Pat's owner is yelling at him and saying, no, no, stupid turtle, turn around. And so eventually Pat does turn around and, you know, makes a little more progress and that's good. But, oh no, oh, Pat did it again and then turns around again. And finally, he eventually reaches the finish line. So that's cool, but Pat's owner is concerned with the points where Pat slowed down and the points where Pat was actually moving backwards. That's a little counterproductive for racing, it turns out, and even for a turtle, we now expect better. And so here's the thing. The first concept that Pat's owner is worried about is where Pat is going towards the finish line versus where he's going away from the finish line. And so you can think about that in terms of if Pat's function is increasing or decreasing. Increasing is just an idea that means Pat's y values are going up. And of course, we've got the opposite idea, which is decreasing. And that's where the y values go down. So maybe the first thing Pat's owner does is he goes back to this graph and he tries to figure out where Pat's uh, position is increasing and where his position is decreasing. And so it's actually pretty easy to do that just by looking at this graph. So we're going to mark the increasing in blue because blue stands for good. And then we're going to mark the decreasing with red because red stands for bad. That isn't actually true, by the way. Those colors are just colors, people. Colors don't have morality, so get used to it. Now. Blue means increasing, and Pat's position is increasing on the X part where I've drawn the blue. So if you wanted to actually like color the graph, that color blue, you could do that too. Everywhere I've drawn blue so far is where Pat is increasing. And actually, let's finish drawing those increasing intervals. It's also increasing starting at this point and going all the way to this point. So everywhere here that I'm now shading, on all those points, Pat's position is going from a smaller number to a bigger number. The Y values are actually getting bigger. And then also one last time, Pat's position is increasing from here 
all the way to the end where he reaches the finish line. So those are the three intervals where Pat's position is increasing. And then kind of correspondingly, everywhere else, Pat's position is decreasing. So right here, we've got some decrease. Do, 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 do. No, Pat, you're going the wrong way, buddy. Also here, ba, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da. Pat, why? Pat, Pat, I had so much faith in you. Okay, so that's where Pat's position is increasing versus decreasing. And actually, let's make sure we know what blue means. Blue equals increase. And then, of course, red equals decrease. All right. Now, uh, hopefully that makes sense to you just by looking at the graph. It's just a difference of where the x value, or sorry, where the y values go up or if the y values go down. Now, if we actually label some of these x values, if we label some of the time values, maybe this is time three, maybe this is time seven. Hmm, I'm gonna erase that time and write it down here. And maybe this is time 12, and maybe this is time 14. And maybe the finish is time 17. So when we say that a function is increasing or decreasing, we almost always give the x values for which it's increasing or decreasing. So check it out. If Pat's owner comes to a mathematician and says, hey, where is this increasing versus where is it decreasing? The owner is just going to give you the x intervals. So we might have this question. Where is it increasing? And the answer that we're going to give is just going to be in terms of the x values. So let's scroll up and see. The very first interval where it's increasing is from 0 to 3. And remember, these are x values. Scroll up again. It's also increasing from 7 to 12. And also increasing from 14 to 17. And now, of course, if Pat's owner had also asked us for the intervals where it's decreasing, we would have said it's decreasing from x equals 3 to x equals 7. That's right here. And it's also decreasing from x equals 12 to x equals 14. Those are the intervals where it's decreasing. So that's the idea behind increasing and decreasing. And that's pretty useful because that tells us if Pat the speedy turtle is actually going in the right direction or not. If Pat's position is increasing, that means he's headed in the right direction. And if position is decreasing, that means he's going backwards. And that means Pat's not getting any turtle food tonight.